it's time to talk about Hideo. And I, I've been meaning to make a video in this vein for a while. As someone who has been big time into the Metal Gear series since the PlayStation days, since MGS1, I have been absolutely on the Kojima bandwagon. You know, big fan of the guy's work. The man is bold, he takes risks, big time. You know, love him or hate him, he is one of the most noteworthy video game developers ever. But, you know, in recent years, <laughs> I, I'm, I find myself kind of just not as enthusiastic about his output as I used to be. We're talking MGS1, MGS2, 3, I'll throw 3 in there as well. That trilogy of games, just, I love them so much that Kojima, he, he ends up largely getting a pass from me <laughs> on, a, on a lot of his bullshit, you know? I mean, he, he's a very quirky man, and that gives his games that unmistakable Kojima meme factor, which so many enjoy, including myself. Whereas critics of Kojima can find it all a little nonsensical. Death Stranding, I, I think for me the jury's out on Death Stranding. I think that I need to actually sit down and try and get into it because I played six hours. I couldn't get into it. The game itself had become a meme before it had even released, you know, naked Norman Reedus with the baby like that. Okay, you know, we know it's going to be weird and, and quirky because Kojima, he's transitioned into now the auteur. This is his auteur phase of his career in the sense that he is now a director, you know, and he's always been a director. He's always had the ego of a Hollywood director, right? Because it's a Hideo Kojima game and you expect a very cinematic experience with at least a, a, an attempt to match the writing and acting of a mainstream Hollywood movie. But Kojima is like stuck in the 70s. He, he has a, a perception of Hollywood, which is like the film buff Redditor midwit perspective, I guess you could call it. You're, you know, you're watching Martin Scorsese movies and, you know, you watch Citizen Kane and you critique it and you read reviews of it and immerse yourself in the art of filmmaking, right? There's that whole, it's an entire culture, which is just, it's perceiving Hollywood in probably the, the best light possible. And the thing with that is, it is a glamour, you know, in, in the traditional sense of the definition. It is an illusion constructed by Hollywood themselves. And there's a lot of self-aggrandizement there. They make films like La La Land, which just, it's like they kiss their own ass a lot of the time. And then, you know, Tarantino fetishizes Hollywood. And I used to be kind of into that when I was younger, but... If you'd ask me now, how do I feel about Hollywood? I, I can barely bring myself to watch a Hollywood film, even old Hollywood films. You know, when you mature and you get to the point where you're aware of how propaganda works and you're aware of what Hollywood really is as an, an industry and how it actually functions. Watching a Hollywood film now, it, it, it makes me sick. You know, I want to, I want to throw up. And, uh... Yeah, Kojima, unfortunately, was, this, this pains me to see this happen, but he has drank the Kool-Aid. And he wants to be one of them, you know? He wants to transition over to Hollywood, to the point where Kojima Productions now have just opened an LA film division. It's like a development production house, and he has opened it. So, as if anyone didn't see this coming, but Kojima now, he is actually trying to transition into Hollywood, but... It's not the magical place where the streets are paved with gold, you know, it's not. It's an ugly place that's full of horrible, immoral people who have an extremely uh, misanthropic view of the world and of America to the point where Hollywood itself, it's anti-America. Hollywood is something else. It exists within America, but I wouldn't say Hollywood is American. At all, to the point where Hollywood now exists as some kind of propaganda wing of the US government, a government seemingly completely puppeteered by its own intelligence agencies. The, the, the meme about the deep state is completely on the money, <laughs> as if you, you can't tell. <laughs> Judging by how the, the system functions, it's pretty obvious that, yes, okay. Biden is not behind the wheel, and uh, Hollywood, <laughs> Hollywood is, is socially engineering the general public. 
So yeah, yeah, and I don't, I don't think Kojima understands this because if he did, he would stay away. <laughs> you know, because the modern movie industry, for the most part, it's devoid of creativity to an almost absurd degree, where you're just taking properties and IPs of the past, you change the races up, you make it hostile to the the, the viewer, you drizzle it in as much propaganda as you can, and that that's it. There you go. There's your Hollywood movie. That's going to cost, I don't know how much movies cost these days, but yeah, it's expensive. And we, you know, the, the producers of the film hate you, <laughs> even as they take your money. They can't mask their contempt. You know, this isn't like cool, breezy guys in the 70s who are, you know, smoking weed, snorting cocaine and making, you know, Easy Rider or like, uh, like Scorsese and all of his clique and Coppola, right? The, the cool, edgy days of Hollywood are over. And, uh, you know, we're dealing with now just a really spiteful, hateful cabal. And a lot of it's very gay. I mean, you have the gay mafia in LA. That's what they call a lot of the new elites, the real movers and the shakers of our modern contemporary entertainment industries, both music, television, and film. I mean, degeneracy is their bread and butter. And this insider class, have a, a, a big chip on their shoulder when it comes to white people, Christians, Europeans, patriots. You know, there's a real contempt on display. And it's always been there, maybe subtly in the background, but it's on full display at the moment. And Kojima, I can't help but think, he doesn't understand what he's getting into. You know, Kojima's just a goofy Japanese man, and he's a creative man. And he's kind of an otaku and a little bit of a pervert. And I don't think the Kojima meme shtick is going to go down too well in woke Hollywood. I don't think that's a great combination. So perhaps Kojima is just learning at the moment that he must cock in order to survive. You know, you can't survive in Hollywood and do the kind of stuff that Kojima is into. You know, big booba girls, you know porn magazines <laughs> hidden throughout the game, you know, stuff like that. Kojima's otaku tier coomer bait, you know, we're going to be denied that if Kojima decides to pander to modern Hollywood. Well, I don't want to see that. Like, I don't want to see politically correct Hideo Kojima. That would be fucking depressing. And yet, you know, you see him mingling with these B-list Hollywood actors and celebrities. He's already kind of moving in those circles. And uh, I, I, I fear for the guy because, Hideo, you're going to have to give up your soul to make it in Hollywood. And just like seemingly everything in the clown world, there seems to be an occult layer to it as well. And the higher up you go, the more you'll come to understand the elite and the religion that they practice, this occult, cabalic Luciferianism. These are people that actually have like a spirit cooking ritual on the reg, conducted by Marina Abramovich, you know, the literal Satanist witch artist. You know, John Podesta will be there and Tom Hanks will be there and, you know, Lady Gaga will be there, right? So Hideo, if you want to get in with that crowd, you're going to have to see and do some particularly bad things, you know? And um, if you want to watch a Hollywood movie, watch Eyes Wide Shut by Stanley Kubrick. Because that's just a little window into this elite world that exists behind this enchantment, this glamour. And I don't want them to take my Hideo, right? I just want Hideo to continue producing quirky Japanese video games for himself and to not forget about the gameplay side and to not forget that he is a video game developer and he's one of the best, despite being overrated. And I can completely understand that criticism you know like for all of the fantastic codec lines in mgs2 how many people are really aware that he had a co-writer for the codec calls in i think mgs1 2 and 3 tomokazu fukushima this dude was writing a lot of that classic codec dialogue including you know the colonel's speech now how am i supposed to know how much of that was kojima uh, and how much of it was this other guy well it's hard to say, and Kojima himself, he postures as the sole creator behind the Metal Gear series. So he takes full credit <laughs> in, in a similar way to Nomura with Final Fantasy VII, right? Where, yeah, you know, uh, uh, okay, okay, but that, still, even if some of that 
dialogue is not Kojima's. The ideas are Kojima's. And that's, you got to give that to him. Whether it be something completely ridiculous that falls flat or you get something great, you know. MGS1, for the most part, I enjoy all of the plot from MGS1. I think it's great. Two goes almost completely off the rails in a good way. Three is becoming a little bit more tongue in cheek. And then four, then we're out in the weeds. You know, we're out in the wilderness of the Kojima experience, you know, the psychological mindset of Kojima, where nothing is making any sense, but there's a lot of dialogue and there's a lot of ridiculous characters that seem borderline satire, but uh, we don't know if we're supposed to take them seriously. You know, whatever. I, I, I still can enjoy that for what it is. But in a similar way to George Lucas, where the less people at his side actually giving him real criticism, the more insane and kind of <laughs> out of control things get in terms of the production. So another Lucas analogy for you there. I don't know why I keep bringing up George Lucas. His story just fits in so many different contexts. But yes, Kojima is one of those guys. He, he needs to be reined in to get the most out of him. But now that I see him pandering to Hollywood, I mean, his Instagram is driving me fucking crazy. And yet I look at it, but it's, you know, it's infuriating. His Instagram is just annoying. He's like some hipster. You know, he like posts pictures of his food, pictures of him listening to music, you know, and he's just listening to like hipster indie music. He'll like Joy Division. He's really into Joy Division. He is like me, aged 19, just coming out of film studies, you know? I'm I'm putting a lot of stock in my taste in this consumerist shitty fucking Western media, you know. It's that almost boomeresque reverence for the legacy film and music industries, you know. They they revere it, and yet it was always subversive. It was always against them. It was just more subtle, and the propaganda was actually entertaining. That's the difference. And you know, I mean, like I mentioned Easy Rider earlier, but that film is insanely like subversive. It's totally an anti-American movie. The point being, Hollywood has always been subversive, or at least for as long as anyone can really remember. And here we are with Christmas right around the corner, and it's been a rough year for a lot of people. And lo and behold, Hollywood have a new Seth Rogen, Sarah Silverman comedy animated film. It's called Santa Inc. about how Christmas is really white and Christmas sucks. Silverman plays a activist elf interested in bringing feminism to the North Pole, all while cursing and engaging in extreme toilet humor because this is a Seth Rogen joint too. So we have to have the immature vulgarity. You know, that's that's his trademark, isn't it? So yes, dude weed. He, he's also playing Santa as a, like a racist white male too. So thank you, Hollywood, for reminding everybody that this is a completely meaningless, commercial, soulless holiday that ideally we would just dispose of. You know, we deconstruct it along with everything else that we don't like about our history and our culture, so we'll do that. Nail Santa Claus to the crucifix, boil him in excrement, you know. Maybe Mel Gibson can direct that one, that would be kind of cool. I'd be, that would be based, but yeah, I, I hope Hideo Kojima, I just hope he understands that, really, if he's serious about breaking into Hollywood, I, I think the best thing that he could do is convert to elfism. 